Welcome to Stand. This is where we help make courage contagious. I'm your host, Kelly Chewbacca. I ran the Alaska's Trump campaign this year, former candidate for U.S. Senate. And I'm joined today by my best friend and husband, Nikki Chewbacca. Welcome to the show, Nikki. Thank you, Kelly. It's great to be here. It's great to have you here. Excited to have you. And we are at standshow.org. You can be one of our standouts by following us there and catching any of our famous episodes like with Bill O'Reilly or Ben Carson or Matt Whitaker, who is just appointed by President Trump to oversee NATO, right? He's the NATO ambassador. Our ambassador to NATO. Yeah, fantastic. So you can go catch all of those episodes. We are excited to have you become one of our standouts. Follow us on YouTube and social media. Today, we have an exciting guest with us. We've had quite an election up here in Alaska this year. It is exciting and it is also confusing. And so we want to talk about it because there are ramifications for what happens across the United States, including being one of the very valuable pickup seats in the U.S. Congress. But we are excited to have one of our newest members to the Alaska State Legislature, Rob Yunt, who is one of our standouts. Rob, thank you so much for being with us on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to have you. So you ran for the Alaska State Senate out in the Valley, Matsu Valley, Wasilla and Palmer area, for those who are unfamiliar with Alaska. We wanted to ask you, what inspired you to run against the incumbent who held that seat for a long time in the Alaska State Legislature, David Wilson? Yeah, <clears throat> um, it definitely nothing personal. I, I just believed that my positions and my policy beliefs were better suited for my community. Um, I, I think David's a great guy. It was never personal or anything like that. So um, I there are some things that are very important to me and to my community that have not been being discussed in Juneau in the last few years. And I knew that I could be, I could change the narrative down there, that this one seat would change the narrative. Uh, similar to... You know, I didn't grow up aspiring to do, to be in politics at all, right? I didn't know that I was going to run for assembly in 2020 until a few minutes before I signed up or become the deputy mayor or anything like that. But I um, I did not like the direction we were headed as a borough um, with local policies coming forward that would have changed our government format to match that of Anchorage's. And I don't think anybody mm. out here would agree with that, Um and so <clears throat> when I signed up for that, it was last minute. I had no intentions of running for this seat until um, it, it really, I, so I had a fundraiser last year and a gathering for my reelection on assembly. And I had brought one person there. Um, I'm friends with a lot of people in the legislature. I respect a lot of them. I think they're great, but I only invited one person who was elected in Juneau to come, right? And she means a lot to me. I grew up with her son. Um, I, I really admire her. Her name is Shelly Hughes. I think she's amazing. And so I invited Shelly because something that's important to me, I have four daughters, uh, an amazing wife. My ex-wife is one of my best friends, right? Like that's not common for a lot of people, but um, <clears throat> I've coached a couple thousand kids and, and I do not believe that boys should be intruding women's bathrooms in sports. Mm. And it's a, it's a strong belief system that I have and I am willing to fight for it. And so I invited Shelly to my fundraiser to give a couple hundred people an update on where she was at with trying to pass legislation to protect our daughters and wives. Right. And it never really dawned on me um, that it would be something that I was willing to go fight for. I hadn't thought about it. And one of the members in the crowd asked during questions, have you ever thought about running for a statewide seat? And I, I had not, and I had just gotten home from Pennsylvania. I was down there at a wrestling camp for a couple of weeks uh, with my son, my wife, my daughters, right? And so we have, our family comes from Pennsylvania. And so I went to a family reunion. There was a couple hundred uh, old Minnicks there in Coddles. And so the Minnicks and the Coddles have been in the Valley for a while, right? But they all came from Pennsylvania. And everybody that came up to me that day told me their biggest, their parents and grandparents' biggest regret in life was not following our side of the family to Alaska because there was no opportunity left in Pennsylvania. So here I am, I'm at this gathering for my assembly seat last year. Um, I had just gotten home from what turned out to be more than just a wrestling camp and a coaching opportunity for me and my family. <clears throat> it, it turned into a very um, moving experience for me. I've met a lot of my family from the East Coast that I never met before. And every one of them regret or not their regret but their parents and grandparents was that they didn't follow our family to Alaska. And so I came back and I was really, it, it hit me pretty deep. And I, I don't want to see my amazing state become California. Right. 
And we're at a time where you're seeing boys compete against girls athletically every day. I'm an ex-professional athlete. I know the difference between a boy and a girl. I have fought in front of millions of people in Las Vegas. There is a difference between my two sons and my four daughters. It's disgusting. And so I have Shelly at this thing. And then all of a sudden someone asked me, have you ever thought about running for a statewide seat? And I said, um, I just spoke from the heart. I didn't know he was going to ask me that. And I, I paused for a moment. I said, you know, if they can't figure out this issue, then I'm going to take somebody's job. Hmm. So how do you, how do you <clears throat> hope to do that now that you're in Juneau and you'll be in the minority with us? Uh, well, they call it a bipartisan caucus, but really it's a bunch of Republicans who vote 90% of the time or more with extreme liberals. I would call them squad liberals like Forrest Dunbar. What do you hope to do? I, um, I want to give everybody a blank slate and benefit of the doubt, right? Like, um, I, I'm going into it like common sense is something that should be passed 61 to zero, right? Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm not going to adjust my moral compass or my district's moral compass for anybody else. So I will pursue things that I believe to be common sense. And, and you know, on a national stage, you're starting to see, of course, they didn't do very well. Democrats did not do very well nationally. And I'm grateful for that because I don't think they have a game plan that works for our country right now. I hope that they'll come back to that. And, and we're starting to see it. And what I mean by that is old school FK Democrats, right? Our parents and grandparents' generations, they could balance a budget. They believed that you couldn't have a country without a border. They knew the difference between their sons and their daughters and so on and so forth. They were really good people. They voted blue mainly because their, their jobs told them to. Does that make sense? They've been pushed out of the party. Their voice has been taken away. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of really good Democrats in this country that don't have mm -hmm. a voice. Anymore. And guess what? They just voted for Trump, right? They voted for Trump because he's giving them a voice. And so <clears throat> now you've seen since the election, a lot of elected Democrats who are standing up and saying, we lost because of these radical woke agendas. And there are members of Congress, elected members of Congress, Democrats who are saying, we, we need to protect our daughters, right? So I'm going to treat everybody in Juneau with the utmost respect. Um, I don't ever attack anybody by name. I attack bad policy. I have no problem with that, but you'll never hear me mention someone else's name. I hope they give me the same respect. I am going to move legislation. I will run a bill to protect my daughters and their daughters and granddaughters and nieces and, and wives. So um, <clears throat> as far as who may or may not push back on that, I haven't put any thought into that because again, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to, to help with common sense. And I want their voice. I want their opinion on that. I want everybody's opinion on this. Right. Um, so we'll, we'll see where it goes, but as far as the, the, you know, the long game for Alaska guys, I'm in the driver's seat. They're not, they just got rejected at a national level, big time. Right? Yeah. Let's follow up on that. So what's your take on, why did our state vote overwhelmingly largest majority ever for Trump? We flipped our house seat back to Republican with Nick Begich, which is a huge win for Congress. And then <clears throat> down ballot, though, we voted to flip Juno blue and in the House and in the Senate. What's your take on that? Why did that happen? I'll tell you exactly why. And I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but yeah. we have no message on education. Hmm. Conservatives have no message on education. I have a message. Right. I was three times I was put in a position to lower funding for education in the Matsu borough. I never did it once. I helped rather than lower funding, which I refused to do. I wanted to help make it more efficient and, and stretch farther. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> I have a bill that I'm going to run uh, that will empower teachers to help make more decisions in their classroom as well. Coming up that I don't want to go into too much detail on this right now, but um, <clears throat> that I think will make sure the money's spent better. Does that make sense? But my message on education has always been, we need to duplicate what they're doing in Florida and Mississippi. And if I lived outside of the Matsu borough in any other part of Alaska, I would be trying to duplicate what the Matsu borough has done with education because we are by far the shining star in Alaska. In fact, our test scores have risen so much in the last five years and the last three years specifically, we're now starting to lift the entire state of Alaska, right? And compared to other states nationally. And so, um, I, I think we can come together as Republicans and Democrats and solve this problem. I really believe that in my heart. Um, I don't think there's anybody down there from either side of the aisle who are ill-intentioned. Everybody wants to help our children. Everybody wants high test scores. 
how do we get there? Well, we're not going to get there doing status quo, what Alaska has been doing, because we've never tested well, right? We've made no improvements other than the Matsu Burl, right? So what can we do that would work? Well, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Let's go find somebody that's done well and duplicate their success, right? This is what we've been around for, you know, as a country for hundreds of years, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, find someone that did a good job and do what they did. That's Florida and Mississippi. And so I had a message the whole time. I don't think we as a party had a message. That's why we lost. Hmm. That's why we lost. So in some of these races in, in the house specifically, that were so close, good people that lost great people, phenomenal candidates. I never right. heard them talk about how to solve the education problem one time. So I think, um, I think what's going to come out of this will be good in the long run. <clears throat> um, I'm in my early forties, so I can play the long game, right? Like I'm, I do not intend to be a lifetime 40 year Senator. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am telling you is in 2031, we're going to adopt our next map and the Matsu Burrow is going to go from nine seats out of 60 to 11 or 12. And I can tell you right now, we are the common sense conservative area in the state. And when we become a much bigger piece of the pie for the legislature, the Matsu Burrow is going to take over state politics starting in November, 2032. And I think that's, that's I right. Think. Yeah, there's a there's an obvious shift happening across the country where we see the mass of Americans rejecting policies that have not been working and electing candidates who are going to do what's best for working Americans and for families across the country. And I think we're going to see that in Alaska as well. I appreciate what you said. The key yeah. I put in the borough is very conservative, common sense area, right? Yeah. Rob, That's let's pick up on the other side of this break. Yeah. You're on stand with Kelly and Nikki Chewbacca. We're talking with Rob Yunt. Stand by. We're going to pick up on the other side of this break. I know that Nikki's got questions for you too. Stand by. We'll see you in a minute.